Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I would like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Particle Shop called Tide. These brushes are inspired from the ocean and the various moods that are reflected. It's important to note that when you install Particle Shop brush pack, it's also installed into Corel Painter and they are installed automatically for you to use in many creative ways. So you're getting the best of both worlds when you install a brush pack for Particle Shop. Particle Shop is also compatible with Adobe Photoshop, Photoshop Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop Elements 13 and 14, Corel Draw, Graphic Suite, Technical Suite, Corel Paint Shop Pro, and Corel Aftershot and Aftershot Pro. So I really enjoy using Particle Shop to enhance my photos and sometimes I will paint into them and change them completely as I'm going to show you here. So let's take a look at the first brush. I'm using Photoshop to uh, work in Particle Shop and you'll notice that when the brush pack is installed it's going to show up on the right hand column and you have the uh, ability at that point to start uh, working with those brushes uh, as they're displayed in the option uh, panel for you. Once you've completed your image and you're ready to save it, then all you need to do is choose Save, and it will save the image, and you can uh, go on to even develop it further. There is no end to the creativity that you can have with photos. So this beautiful photo of a wave is just gorgeous on its own, but sometimes it's just fun to take an image and see what you can do with it. You know, can you make it more painterly? Can you add things to it? So let's go ahead and take a look at the first brush um, called Crest. And what I like to do in um, Particle Shop is always to reset my brush at the very beginning just to make sure that I'm back to the current settings that the brush was intended for. And by selecting the Reset Option tool on the little property bar here, I can do that very quickly. On the left hand col column, you have your brush, your eraser, you can do a little blending, you can sample, and then you can also have your color wheel available. Now, if I click it, you'll notice that it comes on and off. If I want it to appear on screen all the time, then all I have to do is click on this little pin and it's there for me to use uh, as I'm going. You can also have the option to create a glow brush from these brushes, which can be a lot of fun. So do experiment with that as well. So the first brush we're working with is called Crest. And um, this brush would be probably something that I would use just to enhance and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here if I wanted to enhance some of these areas uh, where the wave is breaking or flowing and just to enhance it you know you can you can get uh, you can get very creative or you can be very very specific on what you need and I'm going to show you that in a couple of other photographs here uh, that I've uh, that I've worked on that you'll uh, be able to see what I'm talking about in terms of you know just enhancing a photo so at this point you know all I have to do is go in with this lovely little crest brush and just work on little areas that I might want to further enhance maybe I want to pull the wave down in terms of giving it a little more shape or if I wanted to add color, just all kinds of wonderful, fun and creative ways that you can work with this. On the property bar, there's also a size option here where I can change the brush size. I also have a, a brush opacity. So if I want to, for example, bring that brush opacity down to a very, very pale, soft look, I can do that as well. So you can see that the color is much lighter, not as saturated as I begin to pull in these little changes. And then over here, uh, we can actually uh, increase the number of uh, particle counts in the brush. And um, that, would, that definitely is going to change the look of the brush. So you'll want to experiment at 
definitely with a particle count here because sometimes when you take a default brush, in fact most of the times when you take a default brush, bring the particle count up and actually even bring the size up, you'll find that you may create some really interesting brushes on your own that are totally different from the original brush. So again, this is part of the, part of the fun uh, that you would want to um, experiment with, with. Let's go to the next brush. It's called Blender and we'll go ahead and reset that brush and again the blender is exactly what it says it is it's a blending brush so if you wanted to just enhance certain areas blend certain areas now the more that you blend on a photograph the more you're going to take the uh, photographic pixels out of it and uh, this is a, a wonderful way to work to give your piece a little more painterly quality So anywhere where I might want to soften pixels if I'm getting a really heavy pixelated area in my uh, photograph and my, my idea is to get to a more painterly quality, then this is a great brush because you can simply start working over those areas and softening those areas. I've always found with Particle Shop, um, working with it, that um, there's, a, there's a nice combination between photographic pixels and just the existence of po photographic pixels along with these brushes that, uh, you know, can be very, very exciting to work with. And sometimes it's just something as simple as that and you're done, okay? Um, but, of course, we're going to go on with the rest of the brushes. The next one is called Break. We'll reset that brush. And I'm going to use white here because this is the type of brush that's going to just create an additional area of breakwater. So, for example, if you wanted this break to get a little bit higher, um, if you wanted to build it up a little bit, then this is the brush you would use for break breakwater to give you that really natural looking uh, effect of breakwater. Again, opacity you can play into. Um, this brush works with color too, so if you wanted to, you know, bring in some additional color. Uh, say, for example, you wanted to add some uh, shadowed areas, then of course you could pick up your dropper tool, maybe sample that color, and then go in and do a little bit of shadow work here. And as the wave breaks, there is, uh, there are these little areas of shadow where less light is penetrating and we'll go back up to white and that is our breakwater brush the next brush we'll take a look at is called glassy and this is one um, that I really like it it will it's good for lakes for oceans if you want to take a, a, a heavy ocean and soften it a little bit I like using it at a little bit lower or a smaller brush tip and then it's just a matter of running it back and forth and then it just softens those areas up a little bit. You don't have to use it real heavy, you can just use it in certain areas and it's just kind of a back and forth motion with the brush. Reflect. This one is a fun brush. It's uh, really just, just to experiment with. Um, I like it for waves. Um, I also like it for um, lake, lake areas where you want to just show some 
some nice reflections in the water or ripples in the water. And color is, you know, whatever you want to do here, uh, wherever you want to go with this. But the best, the way that I like using it is kind of in this style of motion where you're kind of zooming around. And you can see that it kind of creates this, this wavy uh, line work. So where would I use it? You know, probably uh, a little bit smaller in size. And maybe if I just wanted to use, show a little bit of disturbance or interesting effect down here at the base of the wave. Or maybe as I go up the wave and show something like that. Uh, in my original image with a surfer, I used it to enhance the flow of his surfboard. So he was kind of moving out in this direction. And I did something like that and then drew, uh, painted my surfer into that area. At that point, I would probably go back to my blender brush. And then I, I would just softly blend out some of those edges. just it's just kind of a fun brush to use and then I would place my surfer say right about in here coming out of the wave and maybe showing that maybe the look of the air forcing you know through the tunnel of the wave The next brush is Reflect, and um, actually we did Reflect, we're going to do, the next one is Sandy, and this one again is a good one for creating a sandy beach. Uh, again, if I wanted to put that down in the corner here, let's get this smaller here, um, probably a little smaller brush size for a sandy beach, and then I would just kind of flow that in at the bottom here. But just getting creative, you'll find all different ways to use it for sure, especially in waves. Again, it's another one that you could uh, even use for, you know, the look of foam if you wanted a softer look coming out, out of the wave. This one is called Splash, and this is a fun one. Um, this one I would use uh, depending upon at what position I was on the photograph. If I wanted to uh, ex uh, accentuate the wave uh, crashing here and maybe show a little bit more of, of, of a splashing wave coming down, then this is the one I would use. Um, it's nice because you can directionally uh, get a, a nice directional flow of the brush. So if you wanted to create something like that where the, the foam is just spraying out Again, opacity would be important, size would be important based upon, you know, what you're trying to, um, what you're trying to do with the, with the brush, what you're trying to express. Um, here, I would probably go a little bit smaller and maybe accentuate the back end of the wave, a little more accentuation of the spray coming off the back. And I'm just kind of working in a back and forth motion here. And then even uh, if I wanted to take my little blender now and make a smaller brush size, I could do a, just a little soft blending in those areas where I might want to, you know, feel that it needs a little bit of blending. In Particle Shop, Control-Alt will also on screen resize your brush. So that's a nice option we have now. We want that to really 
subtly come together and feel like it's part of the wave. Okay, the next brush we're going to look at is Spray. And this one, uh, this one is again a, a type of spray brush, you know, if uh, the wave is breaking up against rocks or you just want to show a little bit of uh, spray coming out a little bit further, again, it's a, it's a good one for that. I like to just simply kind of tap it because at that point it really sprays out and we can get some really interesting um, brush strokes with it. So this wave is really getting wild now. The wave brush is one that um, is simply used for painting and is the brush that I use to, to paint in the little surfer on my original image, which we'll go back to in a minute. So if I was looking to maybe enhance color uh, in this brush, in this painting, this is the one I would use. Um, I'm going to sample this nice aqua blue and go back to my brush tool. And I'm going to bring the opacity down quite a bit on this brush and the size down because I'm going to be working very in very specific areas here. So if I'm looking just to bring out some highlight in the wave, then this is the brush I would use for that. It also can be used just for more or less of your, your detail work as you're going through and finishing up your piece. sample some color and go back in and just a few more little details. So that's how you would use the wave brush. So from very subtle beautiful uh, effects to more dramatic effects in your photographs, Particle Shop is a wonderful introduction to um, how brushes can enhance your photographs, whether you want to go to the very artistic side and paint, or whether you want to add very specific detailed effects to an original photograph to enhance it even further. So I think you'll enjoy the new Tide Brush Pack. It's lots of fun and you'll really have a great time with it. Take care. Mm -hmm.